Bedtime Stories for Giants. Listening to a bedtime story is the best way to end your day. Now that your day is done and you are lying in your comfortable bed with your favorite blanket and favorite pillow and maybe even your favorite stuffed animal, let's snuggle down for a story. This giant bedtime story I'm about to tell you will help you transition from your busy day of learning and growing to a nice, peaceful night's rest. During this story, I will guide you into a relaxed state where you will feel safe to close your eyes and drift off. If at any point during my story your eyelids are too heavy, you can close them. If you just can't stay awake any longer, it's okay to let yourself drift off. This is a time to relax and have some quiet time. I hope you enjoy my story. If you like these stories and you want to follow the giants along on their adventures, please hit the subscribe button. Cruise Ship Adventures Part 1 Our story begins on an extremely hot summer day up on the giant's mountain. The giants were laying around exhausted from the heat of the sun and, to be quite honest, they were getting a bit crabby. You know, when it's too hot out and you just get crabby? Mom giant and dad giant noticed how crabby everyone was becoming and it gave them an idea. Luna, Bo, Apple, Ernie, we found an empty cruise ship docked down by the bay that is between cruises. The cruise company said we could take it out for a spin around the ocean to cool off and, you know, Check to make sure everything is working properly on it, Dad Giant said with a wink. Yay, let's go now, Bo said. Before we go, let's pack a picnic lunch, water the garden, and make sure the chickens are okay in this heat, Mom Giant said. The kids spent the rest of the morning getting all of their chores done and packing up for their day on the ocean. They had to pack life jackets, towels, picnic, and lots and lots of water. When they were ready to go, they snuck down the mountainside to the bay where the ship was docked so no one would see them and try to put them in the circus. Mom Giant and the Kid Giants loaded all their boat supplies onto the boat and suited up in their life jackets while Dad Giant started the engines. I'm so excited to go on the ocean, Apple said with a big smile on her face. I want to try water skiing, Bo told his dad. You know, I was thinking the same thing. I brought canoes we could use as water skis. That sounds so fun, Dad, Luna replied. I think I'll just watch, Apple said, and Ernie agreed that he would be happy with just watching as well. And we're off, Dad called. I'm the captain, and Bo, you're my first mate. Your job is to make sure the engines are working properly and guide us in a safe direction. Aye, aye, Captain, Bo called. Luna! I need you to keep an eye out for pirates. Aye, aye, Captain, Luna called. Apple Peach Banana, you keep an eye out for storms. Aye, aye, Captain, Apple replied. Ernie, man the snacks. Got it, Captain, Ernie agreed. Dad Giant easily maneuvered the cruise ship out of the port, and they were on their way. With the cool ocean breeze, the Giants already felt better. Bo directed Captain Dad. Luna kept her eye out for suspicious ships that could belong to pirates. Apple kept an eye out for storms, and Ernie handed out the peanut butter snack balls they had made. As if this wasn't already fun enough, Mom Giant got out the canoes they were going to use as water skis. A tow rope and double-checked Luna and Bo's life jackets were secure. Luna was up for skiing first. She dropped the canoes into the water, then spin-dived into the ocean. She secured the canoes onto her giant feet by wedging her feet under the canoe seats. She grabbed the tow rope and gave a thumbs up, which was the signal for Dad to go. Dad Giant put on the gas, and Luna got up on the skis on her first go. Mom Giant was a safety watcher. It was her job to tell Dad Giant if Luna fell off the skis, wanted to go faster, or signaled she was done. Luna loved the speed of the water skiing and how she felt when her skis jumped over the wake of the ship. 
Una's turn went without a hitch, and she signaled she was done. It was Bo's turn now. He cannonballed into the ocean and created a splash only a giant could create whilst cannonballing. He secured his feet under the canoe seats, grabbed the tow line, and signaled he was ready to rumble. Bo also got up on his first try. He was a bit shakier at it, but quickly got the hang of how he needed to stand in order not to tip over. He loved the feeling of the wind in his hair and the sea mist on his face. This, he decided, was much better than being overheated on the mountain. After some time, he let go of the tow rope and let himself fall into the water while Dad turned the ship around to pick him up. Bo climbed back onto the ship and laid himself out on the deck of the ship. You did awesome out there, Bo, Apple Peach Banana told her oldest brother. Thanks, it was so fun. Who knew giants were so good at balancing on skis? Next time I want to try, Apple admitted. While they were slowly cruising around, Luna, who was keeping an eye out for pirates, said, Hey everyone, come look at this. She pointed down at the water in the front of the ship. Those are dolphins leading us mom giant told her. Dolphins are so cool, Luna said. I wish I was normal size so I could ride one. That does sound fun. Too bad we're giants, Bo said sadly. What is that? Apple asked, pointing out into the distance. Her job was to watch for storms, but what she saw was a ship off in the distance waving a Jolly Roger flag. Oh no, that's a pirate ship, mom giant replied. Giant kids ran to their dad to tell him what was up ahead. Yes, pirates do roam these waters. It's a good thing we are giants. The pirates will probably take one look at us and sail away as quick as they can. No matter how fast dad drove the cruise ship, it would never outrun a pirate ship. And soon enough, the pirates caught up to them. Ahoy there, pirates, dad giant called. We carry no treasure, but we do have picnic lunches if that will satisfy you. Ah, you thought we were pirates? No, no, we're just regular sailors who like to fly the Jolly Roger flag. It keeps other pirates away. We will take you up on that picnic offer, though. The giants graciously shared their picnic with the sailors and got to talking. They told the sailors about the dolphins jumping in front of their ship and how all the kids wished they were smaller so they could ride on them. One of the sailors said, You may be far too big to ride on dolphins, but if you're interested, I do know some trained whales you could ride. Please, Dad, Mom, can we? Luna asked. I don't see why not, Dad Giant said. Turning to the sailors, Dad Giant said, We'll follow you up on that offer. They followed the sailors to where a pod of whales were jumping and playing in the water. The four giant kids, with their life jackets on, jumped into the water and bowed their heads at the whales. Four of the whales made deep vocal noises and signaled for the kids to grab onto their fins. Those whales took the giants on quite the adventure. Since the giants were giant, they had giant lungs and could hold their breath underwater for quite a long time. Before diving under, the giants took a deep breath of air in and held it. The whales then dove under the water, taking the giants they carried on their backs with them. The giants saw so many other whales, and they saw a sunken shipwreck with colorful fish darting in and out of the ship's rooms. The whales swam quite fast, and they could feel their hair flowing behind them and the weight of the water making their bodies feel floaty. Being underwater made everything appear as if it were moving in slow motion. When they finally surfaced and made it back onto the ship, Apple said, this was the best boating day ever. I agree, it can't get any better than this, Luna said. The giants laid on the boat's deck, looking up at the clouds, talking about the shapes they saw. They saw a poodle-shaped cloud, and they saw a shoe-shaped cloud, and hey look, there's a unicorn-shaped cloud, and even a cloud that resembled a whale. With the gentle sway of the ocean waves on the giant's boat and the sounds of the low rumbling of the engine and the distant cause of seagulls, 
the worn out giants felt themselves drift off with thoughts of underwater pirate adventures. The end. Good night, giants.
as it gets closer, you can feel your body getting warmer from the warmer sea water. The body still feels weightless. shallow water where you climb off and thank him for bringing you to the coral reef and to the beach. You walk up and feel the warm sand under your feet. You decide to lay down on the sand from the sun. As the sun begins to set, your body begins to dry and relax further into the sand. You can feel your feet relaxing and getting dry. Your legs are relaxing. Just know.